Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome to Northgard. This is a Viking themed real-time strategy game that has some neat mechanics that I'm not sure that I've ever seen married to real-time strategy stuff before. And I have to say, over the maybe 20 minutes of gameplay that I've done so far just trying it out, I really like it. I think there's something special going on here. So, uh, full disclosure, this is a review code provided by the developer. And the game is still in early access. You can see down here a build number. Uh, things are subject to change. This is not, not the final thing. So let's just jump right into it. I'm just playing uh, everything on the default settings. We are going to be the orange goats because uh, the random number generator said goats. So you, you can see each faction has a couple of different starting bonuses and then a couple of different fame bonuses. Fame is a resource that we acquire over the course of the game. Uh, so when we reach 200 fame, we get this first bonus. When we reach 500, we get the second bonus. For us, the goat men, uh, we get to start with some sheep and we can build a special sheep building makes sheep even better. Uh, our clan eats less food. I don't know why. It's, you know, it's just how sheep, it's how goats are, I guess. When we get to 200 fame, our feasts will get more effective. None of this means anything to you guys. Let's get in here and we'll, uh, we'll explain the mechanics as we go. So I have to say, the, uh, the music and the art and all of the cosmetic stuff going on in this game, I think is fantastic. There's a lot to be said about the value of a strong aesthetic. Uh, so the idea here is we have these villagers, we have, you can see here, the pretty basic strategy game resources. We got our happiness and our food and our wood and our gold and stone and iron, which are a little bit different. We'll talk about those. Uh, but the idea is we use wood to make buildings. So we're just going to build the basic stuff real quick. We're going to put up a house and a scout camp and a woodcutter's lodge. Uh, and every villager, every person in your empire has a job. They start out as the villager, the basic villager job. We're going to turn this guy into a scout by using him on the scout hut. Uh, villagers just gather food. Uh, we're going to be able to make woodcutters out of the woodcutter lodge, who obviously gather wood. Uh, food is actually not used to make more villagers. Villagers just show up over time as long as you maintain your happiness. Um, most games in these genres uh, make people out of food, but I feel like happiness and time is much closer to how real-life humans are created. So we're going to make a woodcutter here. And you can see the whole game is played over this, these regions. So we started with this region. Our scout just revealed to us this region. And now he's going to walk over to the edge of uh, the visible space and reveal a new region. Uh, each region has a certain number of building slots in it. So we have over here, we've unlocked a new region that has three building slots. It has a fertile land area so we can make a farm. It has a stone deposit and it has coastlines so we can build docks if we want it. Um, there's kind of a lot going on here, and I'm not going to take an effort to explain everything in detail before uh, getting to it. You know, we'll just, uh, we'll start doing stuff, and you will see why, hopefully, uh, eventually. Because as far as I know, there's no way to pause the game in such a way that we can, like, still mouse over stuff. Alright, so once we, once we have a region available to us, and it is adjacent to a, a region we already, uh, own, we can spend food to colonize it, like, bam. And you can see our borders extended over this when I colonized it. We're going to grab our scout. If you colonize a region that has ruins or shipwrecks or, you know, any of the kinds of stuff you would expect a scouting unit to be able to explore in a 4X game, they can go ahead and explore that. So I don't know what we're going to find in these ruins. Um, hopefully free resources. So now that we have these regions colonized, we should build stuff in them. Uh, first of all, this region has a stone mine. So let's grab one of our villagers and build a stone mine. Uh, this region has a field, but we're going to need a little bit more wood before we can make a, uh, a farm. So the Woodcutter's Lodge can support up to two woodcutters, which is to assign another person to be a woodcutter. And you can see over here, this is all of the classes, uh, from villager to sheep. The sheep give us wool, so we don't need as much firewood to stay warm during the winter, which is... A good thing, I think. I'm not sure exactly what the need for firewood is during the winter, uh, mechanically speaking. It may not be a big deal, actually. So we use our villager on the mine to make him a miner. So these resources are infinite, as far as I can tell. Your villagers aren't depleting the land by gathering from it, and your woodcutters actually aren't depleting the land either. You can see trees get chopped down, but new trees spring up. The woodcutters can cut wood infinitely. Stone and iron are limited resources, though. This is 20 stone. Um, 
stone and iron are not used to build buildings. As far as I can tell, they are just used to upgrade existing buildings. So they're a little bit, um, they're a little bit different in use. But I want to make sure we're getting some stone early because I really, really want to upgrade my town hall, uh, which will increase the rate at which we get new people. As you might expect, if you've ever played a strategy game before, that's very important. Okay, so our scout found 100 money and 50 lore. Lore is basically science. It's the equivalent of science in most other games. So we have a little tech tree here that we get with lore. If we get enough techs, we can unlock blessings down here at the bottom of the tree. And if we get all the blessings, we win the game via science victory, effectively. What is effectively a science victory. So for now, uh, let's just take woodcutters, give more wood. Wood is going to be our bottleneck for a little while at the beginning of the game. Let's grab a villager and have them do this. Um, now you'll notice they're going out and like gathering stuff and then walking back to the building and turning in the food. But watch. Watch when this villager drops the food off. Watch our food value. See, it doesn't actually drop off a load of food. There's just a, an amount of food that is being generated over time. So the animations don't actually matter, so it's not a big deal to, like, grab somebody who was on the way to bring back food and have them come and build something instead. Uh, the animations are just pleasant art. Which I actually really like, because that kind of micromanagement stuff I have never found to be particularly fun. Alright, the farm generates food much more quickly than a villager. A person who is assigned to the farm, I should say, generates food pretty quickly. So let's make sure the farm is working at maximum capacity, and I'd really like to build a dock if we can. The dock is one of the few ways that i found of getting more lore, and it sure seems to me that getting lore is a good thing. Right, so we'll build a, uh, build a dock over here. We can actually build another one here. We can take all this coastal land. Well, wow, actually, how do we get off the coast? Can I, can I go up this rock face? Oh, I see. There's a way through over here, and you can see that there are hostile creatures sometimes. You got some wolves over here, some Draugr up in this area. Ooh, an iron mine. Iron deposits seem to be pretty rare from my admittedly limited experience so far. Uh, so we're going to need some military units to clear that out. But let's, let's take care of this stuff first. So we're going to have to deal with this wolf. Oh, we're going to need to build a house as well. Alright, next thing we build is a house, because we've just population kept. Um, yeah, we're going to need military units. Any of your units will defend. Hey, you. Go be a sailor. In fact, you also go be a sailor. So, it's a Viking-themed game, right? And what would it be without, uh, without naval raiding? So we're going to send these guys out on a raid to gain lore. Or am I being attacked by... I'm being attacked by a single wolf. Somebody want to help him? So any of your units will fight to defend the region they are in. Uh, but the only... you can only go out into regions you do not own and fight stuff with military units. So we're gonna have to make some uh, military structures and military units. Let's put a house up. So I'm straining my... Uh, I'm straining my food a little bit here. And obviously we need food so that we can continue colonizing more land. Uh, but we took these people off of the villager job and made them Viking raiders because I love lore. We need we need more science, basically. Uh, we could also have gotten fame. Fame is a victory resource. In fact, we can go look at this now. Uh, there are four different victory conditions. Kill all the other players, uh, accumulate a certain amount of fame and a certain amount of territory, and then build the Altar of Kings, uh, accumulate a certain amount of money and have some economic stuff going on, or the science victory, like I said, obtain all of the blessings of the gods and have some lore masters who are effectively science units. So we will, we will get to all of this stuff. Uh, right now, I think it probably it behooves us to build a healer's hut. Because we have uh, injured people. And first of all, obviously, injured people are closer to death, which is bad. But also, injured units are less effective. So we're going to need a healer. Alright, so these guys are gathering us more lore. We're almost at another... We've established contact with Cory, the leader of the wolf clan. Cory, of course, a strong traditional Viking name. Ah, oh, yeah, this is another player's territory right here. Hmm. Well, I'm not a huge fan of that. 
We'll see if it becomes an issue. Okay, so... I really want to get down here to the end. The end of this tree is pretty powerful. So let's reduce our food consumption. And the healer's hut is finished. Where did that villager go? Congratulations, you're now the village healer. Alright, so she doesn't actually... Um, she doesn't actually have to be in the same region as the injured unit or anything. She basically just kind of stands outside of her hut and shoots healing from a distance at, uh, at other people. Alright, and we've hit our first winter. During the winter, uh, food consumption goes... Uh, food production goes down, wood consumption goes up for firewood, and our military units are less powerful outside of our territory. So, winter's a bummer. We're just gonna have to survive it for now. We'll be okay. Now what we really need is to get a training camp going. We're still we're still positive on wood. So let's start building this up. Unfortunately, uh, pulling a villager off of villaging to build stuff does decrease the amount of food we're pulling in. But taking this region over will be worthwhile because it has another another farm. We can stockpile food during the summer and then just you know work through our supplies slowly during the winter. All right, so our healer is slowly doing the job. We're about to get more villagers. Is there anything else I need to be doing right now? We should probably try to get a another stone mine online. It is really helpful to have stone. We need to get back up to 100 wood to make the town hall upgrade. And once you've upgraded your town hall, many of your other buildings can also be upgraded uh, to increase their effect in some way. How close are we to the end of winter? We are not close to the end of winter, in fact. Uh, Alright, I think we'll probably wait until summertime to clear this out. Just because I don't want to I don't want to pull any more people off of food gathering than we already have pulled off. We need to get up to a hundred wood. Well, we're getting there. Woodcutter's Lodge is already uh, serving two people. So the only way to get more wood would be to, or to get wood any faster, rather, would be to build a second woodcutter's lodge somewhere else. Which, unfortunately, we just don't really have the uh, spare resources to do. Okay, our healer has run out of healing to do, so we'll just reassign this healer into a villager. So we could really use a little bit more food offset. Uh, no job is permanent. You can always just reassign your people dynamically. Uh, but... There is a small cost associated, you can see here. Let me grab a villager. You can see there's a small cost associated with becoming a military unit. So making somebody military and then pulling them back off and then putting them back on uh, does get expensive. It would be cool to maintain uh, your military as military units for optimal effectiveness, but uh, not always feasible. Because man, oh man, do you sometimes get into some situations where resource generation is like vitally important? Okay, we're close enough to the end of winter. Oh wait, not you. Uh, I need a villager. Okay. And a villager should have, uh, a single warrior should have no problem clearing out a single wolf. Once this wolf is down, we'll colonize this area with 80 of our food. We'll set up another, uh, another farm and we will get a person on this rune stone, which will help us develop lore. In fact, it will probably just be this warrior. Okay, so reduce the cost to increase the number of buildings that can go in an area. That's something I haven't talked about yet. But I think I'm just going to increase my population growth speed. Because, like I was saying, I really, really think population growth is important. Alright, so now we have both of those upgrades. Look at how fast that number's climbing. Uh, you can become a lore master. Pulling in lore even faster now. And we also should set up a farm as soon as we have enough wood. We're probably going to have to set up a second woodcutter's camp, actually. We're just not... we're not pulling in wood fast enough. Uh, so which buildings still have... Oh, you depleted the slot. Okay. Let's destroy this building. And for the meantime, you can go back to... Actually, we have some injured, so you become a healer for now. Uh, so each region, you can see, has a building count, a maximum buildings that it can support. And once you're at the max, you can spend some money to increase that count by one, just once. 
let's go ahead and do that here. An unknown clan has discovered the relic of the gods. Okay, I don't know what that is. We'll we'll get to that. So let's make a let's make another woodcutter's lodge. Right now we're doing okay on food. So I don't feel bad diverting a couple of villagers to uh, to wood. And then we need to get to 80 wood. Oh, our scout's been injured. Where is our scout, anyway? Okay, he's up here exploring deep into Red's territory. I don't know how useful that really is to us. Ooh. A wolf cave. What is that? Alright, you can tell there's a lot of stuff I haven't seen yet. The, oh, this is a relic of the gods. Allows you to recruit three lore masters, and lore masters produce a double lore in this area. And there's fish here? Wow, this is a good region. We gotta get over here. I don't know how we're gonna fight a Valkyrie. Isn't, like, one of the things about Valkyrie that they're, like, invulnerable or something? Some Valkyries have been corrupted by the powers of Helheim. Alright. Well, we're gonna have to uh, get a functional military going at some point here, but for right now we're still in the early resource phase of the game. Rats have been reported. Okay, so this is a random event. You can see it will occur. This is the, the present time. This will occur when it slides all the way over to here. This uh, this meter also helps us tell when it's going to be winter and how long winter will be. Uh, so what's the deal with the rats? We, they will devour 40% of any food that is not stored in silos. Uh, man, I think we might just have to let them eat some of our food because I do not have the spare wood to be making silos. Okay, all buildings can be assigned an additional villager if they are upgraded is pretty great. Reduces extra firewood consumption, though, I think is the way we're going to go. We're bottlenecked badly enough on wood that I don't think we want to be losing extra wood during the winter. And let's grab a couple of villagers for this. Okay. Oh, we're having happiness issues. So, uh... Villagers produce unhappiness. And you get more happiness by owning land. They love it when the clan is taking stuff over. So what do we have? We have three Draugr in this area. Three Draugr is maybe a little bit too much for our current cap of two, uh... Two warriors to handle. Why don't you become a... I don't know. A farmer for a minute. Yeah, we're going to have to maybe make another military structure. So I found that these axe throwers were pretty good. We can make an axe thrower camp here since we expanded the number of buildings that, is, uh, that are available. Let's grab a couple of villagers because they uh, would be making food more efficiently at a farm. Looks like um, a villager produces four food, it seems like. And in most cases, uh, farmers produce, or most most of the fancy food jobs like farming and fishing, produce five or six. So it's a small difference, but it's still a difference. All right. Once we have this set up, we have quite a bit of money, so we'll use some money to transform some villagers into uh, military units. We'll go and cleanse the land of the undead. Unfortunately, this area is a swamp. It says it makes it harder to build in this area. My assumption is that that means it costs more wood here than it would otherwise. Um, and getting a little bit more uh, land will help us with our unhappiness. There's one other solution to unhappiness, of course, as always in video games, and that is uh, liquor. And actually, you know what? It's looking to me like that might be a faster solution than getting our... Uh, getting our military online. So we have some extra food. I mean, we can do both, obviously. It's gonna be... It's 20 money to transform somebody into a warrior, or 30 to make him an axe thrower. How far are we from winter? If I'm not gonna build a silo, I actually kinda wanna burn down to a small amount of remaining money, I think. Okay, where's a, where's a loose villager? We actually don't have a lot of loose villagers right at this moment. How close are you to done with that? All right, I'm gonna grab one of our uh, one of our woodcutters instead. So there's a war chief unit that we can hire with this building, but it requires iron. And like I said, iron is not always super easy to come by. 
Alright, let's try with two warriors and an axe thrower. See if we can get rid of three Draugr. We do not currently have someone assigned as a healer. They can't heal units that are actively in combat anyway, it seems like. Um, so that probably won't affect our ability to clear this area. It'll just affect how quickly we recover afterward. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna pull the injured warrior back so that the Draugr changes targets. There we go. Alright, everybody back to villaging. Um, actually, one of you should go... Somebody should go and become a healer. Okay. So let's colonize this area, and that'll give us a little bit more happiness. Oh, hold on, I'll deal with this lore in a second. Uh, and let's grab a woodcutter and turn them into a brewer. Because everybody in every video game is slightly alcoholic. It's always the way. Okay, so let's spend our lore. Um, all buildings can be assigned an additional villager if they are upgraded. Seems like an incredibly good bonus. This will give us a little bit more money per turn, but let's let's go ahead and pick this up. It may not be the most relevant thing right this second, but it will become relevant soon. We can upgrade like a farm. Actually, we can upgrade a farm right now. So ordinarily, upgrading a building increases its output by like 20-ish percent unless you assign one extra person. We get to assign two extra people. Oh, no, wait. Um, house. Go to a house. Become a house guy. So I think I'm just going to assign both of these to work this farm. Okay, and now the farm will really produce a lot of uh, resources. Yeah, we're getting 33 food from farmers. Okay, uh, we also need to set up a mine over here. Getting access to some early iron uh, seems like it could be really powerful. So let's grab a villager. This is our scout over here. Our territory is under attack. Where is where is this animal? Huh. Oh, there's a single wolf over here. Um. Hey, you guys, come help. I'm tanking my food really badly for a second to make sure that nothing stupid happens with this wolf. Okay. Good, good. Yeah, if you have a, a region where you have no workers and no uh, buildings, it seems like it can be completely disrupted by any enemy unit walking in. Okay, and we're actually going to be really good on food. I think we're... We are out of the resource death spiral. Oh, they don't produce any food at all during the winter, huh? Uh... Is there a house nearby? Okay, no, they, are, they were producing food. It's just they, they start to produce food as soon as they enter the area. So it didn't look like they produced any extra food when they got to the farm, because they were already producing it while walking there. That makes sense. That building has no workers. Problem solved. And we do have a healer on right now, so we're getting our stuff healed. Winter is... Yeah, winter's not going to be long enough to cause a problem. But we do need a housing. Guess it's gonna have to be over here. Or this region could with could stand a couple more buildings, actually. Alright, Cory has reached the fame title Fame. We're almost there. So at 200 fame, we'll unlock our first fame bonus. Uh, which in our case is feasting increases production bonus. Uh or sorry, it increases the production bonus of feasting. I haven't done any feasting yet because I was waiting for that to come online, but uh, we'll see that in a second. I don't think we need more than one person mining iron. Not right now, anyway. Uh, so the brewer is increasing our clan's happiness. Yeah, I kind of think everybody's doing the thing they need to be doing. We just need more people, which means we need to build a lot more housing. I'm going to make another house right after this. Okay. And we're doing really well on lore. Uh, so... Reduce the cost of increasing the number of buildings in an area. I don't think that's a big deal. 
Okay, and researching has given us a little bit of fame, and so we are now a thane. So, to organize a feast, you pay, you pay some amount of money, you get some fame, and you also get plus 2 and then plus 30% on top of that to all of your production yields uh, and your happiness. It's really powerful. Uh, it costs progressively more each time you do it. I wanted to make sure that we had our bonus, our, uh, our Thane bonus, before we did it, because our feasts are much more effective this way. Okay, so we're starting to get to a point where our building upkeep is eclipsing the amount of money we're making, even with our coastal rating. There's a couple of ways we can deal with that. I think the way I want to deal with it is by uh, upgrading the dock. But we're going to have to make a mine over here, aren't we? Because we ran out of... Uh, and we'll have to upgrade this region and then make a mine, because we ran out of stone. Okay, our healer is out of stuff to do. Let's turn this healer into a brewer, since we just hit our happiness again. Okay, and I'm going to organize a feast. So you can see, all of our yields have gone through the roof. We also have enough iron now to improve our tools. So we can pick one kind of job, spend uh, 30 money and 5 iron, and just make that job 15% more effective for the rest of the game. So I think uh, farmers and woodcutters are probably the way to go for us on this one. Uh, I think we're probably still... Yeah, you always need food. Okay, so we're going to end up with huge, huge amounts of food. So we have a never-ending wolf spawning cave, we have some Valkyries, we have a never-ending Draugr tomb. I kind of want to build a defensive structure. I think it might be a really good idea to build a defensive structure. So the defensive tower doesn't actually eat one of your building slots, and it just shoots arrows at any enemy unit that enters the area. Our scout has been killed. He took damage while exploring a new region one too many times. Our territory is under attack, oh no! Uh, two workers, I think, beats a wolf. Okay, yeah, two villagers beats a wolf. I didn't, I didn't need to pull anybody off for that. Uh, and the defensive tower plus one worker also beats a wolf. Alright, so we're bringing in new villagers quickly. Let's temporarily make one of our new villagers a healer, so we're going to need that. Yeah, now we need stone. We need money and stone. Uh, we should probably get a building that makes money. How about a trade? How about a marketplace? Marketplace makes money. Looks like there's also trading posts. I'm not 100% sure... Train your villages to become merchants and spend crowns to buy resources. Huh. I don't know. Uh, we have enough food to organize a feast again. It's going to be a while till winter. We can afford to spend food on this. Uh, we can see that that tremor that we were warned of is coming. It's going to damage some of our buildings, and we're going to have to spend wood on those buildings quickly to uh, repair them, or else they're going to burn down. I had that happen <laughs> during that little test game I was running. Okay, the marketplace is complete. So we can assign two villagers to this and make them traders who just passively produce money. And then also we can purchase resources for money. Ooh, a bear. Interesting. Well, that looks like uh, looks like we're not going to be able to interact with that at all. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of big stone walls blocking Red off from us, despite the fact that he's really close to us. I don't think we're gonna have to worry about him uh, jumping us or anything. Oh hey, we have uh, we have six knowledge, so we could get a thing. Uh, you know what? Let's take twenty stone and ten iron. I think over plus three happiness. Yeah, and then we'll just use some of our uh, some of our new stone to upgrade our brewer. So that we can assign more brewers and so that each brewer gives us more happiness. Also, we've hit our food cap. But unfortunately... Here, we'll, uh, we'll feast again. Unfortunately, we can't afford to build a structure to house the food, because we just don't have the wood. Uh, so, trading. We are starting to have crowns problems now, so let's pick up 
trading. Enables trading routes with trading posts. So we don't have any trading posts. But that sounds like a thing that could be useful. There's obviously still a lot of stuff in the game that I don't exactly know how it works. Uh, we probably don't need so many people. Let's let's refill our wood camps here. We don't need so many people making food, and we really do need more wood. Okay. So let's just grab some loose villagers and have them repair the damaged structures. What else got damaged? Three of our buildings, it says. What's the third one? Ah. Okay. That wasn't so bad. Alright, the next thing I want to upgrade, like I said, is the longship dock. Because it makes us money and it gives us another resource. And I think it is probably time to assign some more brewers as well. Healer doesn't need to be a healer anymore. Alright, so that gives us a ton of happiness to work with. Just organize another feast. Keep improving tools. Uh, let's improve the woodcutter tools. We definitely could use more lumber. We actually have enough iron to do another... Wow, we have a, enough iron to do a bunch of improves. We're at 13 iron. Uh, merchants make more crowns. And sailors make more crowns. Oh, we actually... We're out of crowns. We have enough iron to keep improving, but we ran out of crowns. Okay, so... I think Iridition is next. We're gonna get our... Uh, get even more people into our lore engine. So wait, stop reading. Let's fill this boat. And our territory is under attack. Uh, oh, what is... that's a berserker. Well, he seems to be getting his ass kicked by our tower. Yeah, I don't think we have to worry about this. But that's actually... that's a player unit. That's red. Red. Oh, there's a break in the... He was able to expand down to here. Well, I wanted this territory. Okay, we're gonna have to interact with him, unfortunately. Okay, start raiding again. Now that we've got four people in the boat, start raiding again. We're doing pretty well on lore, I think. We're bringing in a lot of lore very quickly. Uh, could you please... No, you are a miner. Miners don't repair things, it's beneath them, apparently. Yeah, please go and fix this building. All right, well, on the whole, I think we're doing pretty well. Miners get more materials, lore masters get us more lore, I guess? How much more iron is there? There's four more irons. There'll be enough for one more upgrade. Or, for us to hire our war chief. I think that's what we use the last five iron on, is hiring the war chief. And then he can go stand in this region and help to defend it. Because it doesn't look like we're vulnerable to attack from anywhere else. Okay. Uh, you know what I would really like to do, actually, is build more, um, build more docks. Now, this region is already at the building cap, the actual building cap. We can, we can expand the cap here and build a dock. Here, we have to de demolish something. Um, you know what? I will demolish this. Because so we are not currently using a scout anyway. Keep in mind, I'm not trying to tell you that any of the things that I'm doing here are good play strategy, because I wouldn't know. Um, just, just started playing, but, um, trying my best here. Okay, so you can gather here in the swamp. We are probably going to have to go up the violence tree there in the middle a little bit, though. Okay, let's expand the number of buildings that can be built here and make another dock. Because we could just... we could bring in a really huge amount of lore and just try to get one of those lore victories. I don't know how feasible that is, um, you know, relative to the speed with which the AI will be trying to win the other victory types. But, uh, it could be really good. 
Okay, so we have to we have to get get together the crowns to upgrade here so we can get some more stone. Uh, oh, the iron's out. Right. Well, let's demolish the mine. Set you to food gathering. We have enough of a food surplus that I'm not too worried about like actually running out, but it would be nice if we didn't deplete too much of it. Okay. It's 150 crowns. Man, we really need a lot of money. Okay, let's try a trading post. We have a building slot here since we destroyed the mine. Can I improve my sheep? Nope, sheep do not use tools. Oh, I didn't look at the sheep building either. It allows you to enclose your sheep to produce food. Oh, okay, that's, it just makes the sheep into food workers effectively. That's not bad. Oh, we capped out on housing again too, damn. Uh, we're actually at the building cap in all of our regions. I need to expand. So this is the yellow player up here. Yeah, I need to expand, which means I need to do some violence. Alright, let's... Expand this region's building uh, values. Yes, I know. Get a mine going. And now that this is happening, we can start working on, uh... Yeah, gather... Let's let this dude gather food until we finish the... The winter, and then we'll convert some people into traders. So how does this work? I can make a trade route. Okay. I'm definitely not trading off stone or iron. We need that too much. We can probably afford to trade wood, and I'm not trading with the red guy because he's not trustworthy. Okay, so we just are allowed to trade off some of our wood surplus to make money more quickly. Yeah, it works for me. So as soon as we have our war chief, uh, we can start thinking about getting aggressive. Actually, where... Oh, what is this? Portals leading to Helheim. Uh, wow, okay. We need this dude more than ever. Can I upgrade the number of buildings allowed here? I can. Because we're going to need another house. Oh, it takes 10 money to build a house. Here. Okay, so when this thing reaches that, we're going to get some Draugr. Fortunately, they're coming up in an area that has a defense tower. Um, and also, hopefully, we'll be able to have a war chief by then. Or, you know, maybe I should just... Yeah, when that gets really close, worst case scenario, we'll assign a couple of warriors. And run them down there. I don't know how many Draugr we're going to get, but it can't be too many per portal, I would imagine. Alright, I guess we're gonna... Let's just go ahead and make a warrior or two right now. Hurry, guys, hurry! Man, it's quite a run, actually. Would you be repairing this, please? Does that work that way in this game? Yeah, you better run! What are you doing? Stop chasing. go stand in front of the portals and get ready to do some work. Uh, so this might be a good time to pick up. Increases civilians resistance by 20% per building in the area. Okay, neither of these are actually relevant to our current situation. So maybe we would be better off just picking up some of this stuff. Ooh, sailors produce 50% more resources. That sounds really good. Uh, let's pick up three extra happiness. We'll fill this house up very quickly. Okay, how many spare civilians do I have? Or just random villagers? Because I think we could assign all of them to this boat, probably. Oh, this is not an upgraded ship. Never mind. Right, let's run out the injured warrior. Just enough to get the dragger to change targets. Okay, yeah, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> uh... You guys can just become villagers and gather stuff here. 
one of you can fix this. Then we can grab one of our other villagers and reassign a healer real quick. We are at Nunstone. Alright, well I guess start raiding. We'll, we'll upgrade that building at some point and uh, get more people in there. I guess I never bothered to assign someone to the mine after setting it up. Okay, so we have our war chief now. The war chief is a larger, stockier unit. Should be plenty able, combined with the uh, with the tower, to keep this place safe. All right, so what, what's our next feast cost? Five hundred. We're pretty far away from winter. Let's uh, let's let it accumulate to five hundred, and then we'll we'll do that. We need to get some more... We need to get our stone a little faster, too. But I don't want to divert too many people from food. Well, I guess with the feast on, actually, that's not a problem. During the feast, we're, uh, we're certainly generating way more food than is actually necessary. Okay, so once we have that up, we'll upgrade this. Why do I have an uncompleted husk of a dock over here. We're actually going to need to place another house already. This region could still take an upgrade. Oh yeah, we're making we're making crazy money right now. Okay, we're going to have to expand, which means going through red. At some point I have to stop uh, developing the ability to make resources and actually start turning those resources into violence. <laughs> what do I think it's going to take to get a hold of Red's region? It's just one defense tower. He has some warriors nearby. They seem to have killed that Valkyrie, but not taken the region. Okay, yeah, this is like the iron. It is hot currently. Uh, so we need... We need to take some people who are not currently working on food, I think. We can pull aside some woodcutters. Alright, uh, it's not going to be winter anytime soon. Trading food increases crowns, reduces marketplace prices. Alright, well let's start working up the tree toward some of the better fighting stuff, like plus 15% damage. I don't know that I want to pull a trader off. We could pull you off of being a healer. I probably don't need the stone to come in quite this quickly. Okay. Let's pull all of our military units over to here and let's see if we can take a region. This will be the first time I've done this. Okay, we're actually losing a little bit of food now. Why don't you... Why don't you go ahead and... Okay, maintaining some kind of resource equilibrium here. Set a control group, and let's do it. Get him. Our attack has soured relations with the guy we're attacking, guys. I'm not 100% uh, shocked about that. Yeah, I don't think this is going to work. It looks to me like we're going to lose a lot of people. Uh, please focus on the warriors. And we're doing a lot of damage, but we're not going to be able to bring the tower down, is my concern. Well, we're doing okay damage to it. Mm, I don't really want to pull a bunch of people off of things and turn them into soldiers right this second. Are we going to kill this before it kills our war chief? I'm not actually sure what happens if your war chief dies. Like, does he just go on cooldown and then another one eventually appears? Or do you have to buy a new one? Okay, well, we did it. I think we're going to be able to kill this guy, too. But if they send another warrior after this, I don't know. Okay, so we are, we are taking control slowly. He took this over. I'd really like to own this. This seems like a fancy and important structure. He actually kind of doesn't appear to have any other defenses. 
Now that said, I can't just charge him because when his units start fighting defensively, they will absolutely kill my war chief. But we've actually had a couple of civilians spawn. Let's, uh, yeah, let's assign some more fighters. You guys, take this area. Oh, you want to stand and fight? Okay. I think we can take one guy. Okay. Let's colonize this region. So apparently you don't just take it from them, you make them lose it, and then you still have to pay to colonize it. That seems a little more fair. So is this actually my building? Unfortunately, when you click on a, a class to select them, it snaps the camera to them, which is kind of annoying because it's almost never what I want. Alright, now that we have a real army again, though, I'm kind of... I'm kind of thinking maybe we can just push, because we seem to have ruined a lot of his stuff. I'd be pretty surprised if we could actually take another player out like this, but, you know, having devoted so little effort to our military and everything, but... Okay, we do not take the winter attack penalty. We're about to gain 15% attack. Build a house. We're going to need a house eventually. Who's this guy? Oh, that's a scout. I don't think you can actually manually attack a scout. Man, it's taking a long time to wear down this... their control here. Alright, and we're actually out of food. Shoot. Uh, go over here and be a person who is farming. Actually, everybody, go be a person who is farming. <laughs> Who is gathering, rather. Yeah, because we're... We're accumulating starvation at an incredible pace. Uh, please. Please farm. Okay, that should be... Hmm. It's not helping. It's getting worse. That's weird. I expected when they started gathering that things would get better. Uh, okay. I have an idea. Why don't we buy some food? So we have a lot of money. Boy, we are hemorrhaging food, though. This blizzard is not a joke. Well, we have a lot of money. Try to just buy my way out of it. We don't currently have a healer. We could really use a healer. But I don't want to pull anybody off of resource generation to do it. Oh my god, how long is this blizzard? Yeah, this is, uh, this is looking like we may not be able to buy our way all the way through it. Uh, stop all the raids? This is red guys? Oh no, it's random Draugr. Shoot. I tried to pull him back. Yeah, this blizzard is, uh... This is brutal. It's gotta be almost over, right? Is it gonna last the whole winter? The whole winter is a blizzard? Well, even so, that's not so bad. Uh, I can't pull any people off to go fight the... the Draugr, so I guess we're just gonna lose this region? It's not like I cannot do anything about it. Everybody's gotta be producing resources. You know what, at this point, just keep raiding. I'm not even going to pull them off the ships. Yeah, because there, the, uh, there goes the blizzard, and then winter's about to end. Yeah, and we're fine. Okay, we made it through, just barely. Thank God I hadn't spent all that money. Ah, never mind. Too late. Okay, so now we need to uh, put some money back together. And yeah, we have to just hire a new war chief. Okay. That's crummy, but it is what it is. We're just going to have to deal with it. 
What is your deal? You were a miner, you no longer need to be a miner. Okay. Make us food. We need to... Need to fill up on food. Actually, I told him to become a woodcutter instead of food, but that's actually better. Alright, so we're going to have to recolonize this, which is annoying. That's an expenditure I wish I didn't have to make. A Draugr attack during a blizzard is really brutal. And unfortunately, that blizzard completely saved Red's life, I think. Now we have a healer, right? We can save this so that we don't have to rebuild it at least. Uh, we need more villagers, or we need more woodcutters, is what we need. As much as I'm enjoying having all of the money, uh, let's pull a couple of these guys. Actually, we have the stone necessary to upgrade this field. Oh, hey, we get two free tools. So let's upgrade... 15% attack power on warriors, and... Sure, let's just get better at violence. Alright, we're going to need to find another source of iron before we can... Uh... Oh, you... I don't know, become a miner. What is there even to mine here? Stone, okay. Alright, so we broke their control of this. I mean... We should stop- they're trying to build a defensive tower, so we should definitely stop that. I wish we had a war chief. No, they're doing a good job, they're driving us back. Improves war chief attack or gives a bunch of happiness on the war chief. Hold on, we'll, we'll figure this out in a second. Stop that. Don't let her finish that. Okay. Right, so let's figure out our new uh, our new lore. Uh I guess having a war chief gives us a bunch of happiness sounds pretty good. Oh, and we don't even have to go to the trouble of tearing the building down. We just remove their control over the area, right? And that'll uh, that'll solve the problem for us in a less direct way. Can we purchase? Yeah, let's purchase some iron to make a war chief and send our war chief over to here. Yeah, we're doing it. Yeah, he's running woodcutters at us. That's desperation, my friends. Ooh, hunters. Hunters have bows. That's not, uh, not terrible. Yay, the war chief is here. Okay, we did it. Uh, so we should try to just finish these guys off, right? Hold up, don't... Don't go in there first. Yeah, I should try to just finish off his town hall. Okay, we're not close to our housing cap. We're making okay... <clears throat> making okay food and lumber again. I could probably pull a couple of villagers um, to use as fresh soldiers. Okay, we are... We are slowly bringing down their town hall. Where are you going? Oh, that's depleted, huh? Well, let's burn this down. And then just send you back to here to make food. Yeah, 
are you guys doing? Hmm. I'm having a weirdly difficult time commanding my warriors to move into this region. Okay, so we are <coughs> progressively, they recolonized this as soon as we left it. We are progressively decolonizing all of their areas. Okay. I think we're actually going to eliminate a player here. Look at that. Uh, it's possible that I might need to turn the difficulty up too hard. That might be the culprit here. Okay, Cory has been defeated. And my territory is under attack. Alright, rats are coming for the food. At this point, we probably can just build silos. We actually, we have resources now. Hey, you, come over here and build some silos. Now, if we can colonize this stuff, we can, uh... Grab me a citizen who's not busy, a villager who's not busy. Colonizing this stuff can allow us to rescue some of these buildings. Oh, actually, never mind. We don't have any wood. Well, I didn't need to do that at all. Over here, we definitely want to uh, assign some more masters. So we have four woodcutters? We are. Okay. We should make more. It costs 50 wood to build a lodge? Okay. We'll make one here. In just a second. Alright, the silo increases our... Wow, the silo doubles your food storage. That's pretty good. Yep, everything's on fire, you know. That's fine. We'll be fine. So where is another loose villager? Okay, we're doing pretty well though, I think. Once we get three people over here to work on the, uh... Oof. These three villagers. Three people over here to work on this. Uh, I think we actually might be on our way to a lore victory pretty quickly here. Oh, hey. So we just need to get three more... Three more lores. We can definitely do this. Yeah, we can assign some more people to ships as well. This ship is even ready to accept more people, we just don't have people to put on it yet. Well, let's not push it right this second, because actually we may have to reassign some people to uh, food and or lumber during this coming winter. Let's see how bad the winter is. Uh, is there anything we can pick up that will help us during the winter? No, it doesn't look like it. Trading food increases our trade route income. Sure. Okay, so we're bringing in the uh, we're bringing in the lore master. Oh yeah, we have to have four active lore masters. So actually, we really needed another thing that we could put lore masters on. I totally forgot about that. Okay, we need some more food. Who can be reassigned to food? You. Can definitely be reassigned to food. I don't really want to pull any of our sailors. Our sailors are currently generating lore. We're gonna need more housing. Can we? I'm gonna pull this woodcutter. We have to turn her back into a villager and then have her go and uh, build the house, unfortunately. It's a little bit roundabout. Uh, it looks like we should be okay on food. But if we had to, we could buy some. And then once this winter's over, uh, we can redevote ourselves pretty hardcore to lore. And I think probably pull off a victory. I'm a little worried about all these Droger. Huh? 
Ah, oh, there's a spotter here, though. We can't actually kill them. That's actually a good idea. Let's, uh... Let's put up a defensive tower, shall we? As soon as this house is done. There's Draugr over here as well, which makes me a little nervous, because our lore masters are completely undefended right now, but... The army's close enough that we could just run over there if we had to. Okay, the house is finished not a moment too soon. Yeah, alright. I think we're good. I think we're gonna do this. So, what... We need to redefine... Or reassign some number of... Actually, we could reassign a couple of villagers to... Let's go buy some food right quick. I assume lore masters are not great fighters, although it looks like they're handling that. I think actually we're gonna lose one before the war chief can get there. Oh no, okay. They made it, yes. Good job, everybody. So with the defensive tower here, I think we can probably post the army over here. And then we can take... Uh, we can take a couple of our... villagers and turn them into farmers. Let's grab two villagers real quick. This will be a uh, a net food increase. Our silos have successfully protected us from the rat infestation. All right, and let's pull the raiders so we can put more people on the boat. And now that this is done. You can become a lore master over at this rock. Ooh, this is a hunting area. Okay, um... Honestly, I don't know that any of this matters. Let's make our war chief a better fighter. Seems fine. So... What, do we just win the game at the next... The next tech? Seems like that might be... Yeah, I think, I think we might have it here. Alright, everybody get on the boat. Oh no, somebody else has obtained a second blessing. Okay, and then we... Put some more people in this boat. That's coming along at a pretty good rate. Alright, the fishermen will solve our food problem for now. Are fishermen good fighters? No, they seem to have the same defensive stats as everybody else. I see this. I see you. I think you're sneaky. Let's see, the defensive tower probably will be able to solo him, but we can get him down a little bit faster. And prevent any damage to the tower, so we don't have to bother repairing it. Yeah, so it seems like the AI is maybe a little bit too passive on this difficulty. You know, future games will just play on hard. It'll be okay. Still getting new population... Oh, I don't have the stone to upgrade this dock anyway. Although... You know, all you need is money, really. It's just like real life. Okay, so we could assign definitely at least one villager over here. Because we're going to win the game before the next winter anyway, I think. Unless there's some additional step, which there totally could be. Ivar just became a Jarl. We've been, uh, we've been one of those for quite some time. Man, this game really does look nice. 
trying to select this villager. Here we go. Go forth and raid. Okay, five five lore masters, uh, three of whom are on a relic of the gods, plus twelve raiding lore pirates. Uh, seems to be seems to be the trick. Good work, us. Uh, we never did manage to get any hunting going. Hunting I used quite a bit in my off-camera game. It seems to be a very effective way of generating food. It probably works okay during the winter, too. It doesn't say on the tooltip that it's winterproof the way the fishing does, but you have to imagine. You could come over here and be a fisherman. What, is this yellow attacking me? What is wrong with you? Okay, uh, reduce our upgrade costs. And that's it, right? Hey, look at that. And they have a little... I love these little things. Little uh, replay, Civ Five sort of style. So yeah, that's Northgard. That is the... Uh, that is the thing. I think this is a really cool game. I'm excited to get into more of it. Um, if you'd like to see more of it on the channel, please, you know, comments and likes below. It helps me helps me to know what you guys want so that I can make what you want. And uh, we'll see you next time.